Well, I guess X marks the spot, because this week is going to be a really fun one. Trust me. Yep, you guessed it. We're going to be talking about Indiana Jones. What do I remember about the initial trilogy of Indiana Jones? I didn't get to see the young Indiana Jones Chronicles. I know I have the ability to watch it now. I just haven't gotten around to it. But the first three movies, the ones that I grew up with, with many of us grew up with, and now they're just so cemented in pop culture and it's such an icon because you know Indiana Jones is like the ultimate adventurer <laughs> he's who you know we all wanted to be and pretend to be as kids you know running around being imagine being chased by boulders or flying rocks all this stuff and these are just fun movies at the end of the day it's so cool to learn how much they were influenced and referencing to the old 1930s uh, Saturday morning serials of the day. And many of the visuals convey that, obviously. And I just love so many of the characters and the actors who did a great job of portraying them. You know, Harrison Ford, obviously he was, he was the right choice to play Indiana Jones. You know, nothing against Tom Selleck. It just... It was the right move here. Paul Freeman, he was great, and I didn't get to see him again until Hot Fuzz came out in 2007. And once I saw him on screen, I was like, <gasps> We call him Belush. No, we call him Belloc. John Rhys Davies, great as Sala, and after that, I didn't see him again until that TV show Sliders. And of course, Alfred Molina's first big feature film. <laughs> I didn't know who he was at the time, but now seeing all the stuff that he's done, I was like, oh, he was so cute. Look at him. You know, and that opening that, you know, the South American temple, also cool to learn later on down the road as I got older. It was based on sort of the Donald Duck and Scrooge McDuck, I guess before DuckTales even came around, just those old duck adventures. I was like, huh. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I can see that now. Didn't really make the connection. Didn't think about it when I was a kid, but yeah. And Ronald Lacey played Hair Tote. And you've probably seen him in quite a few things without realizing it. I didn't realize how good of a character actor and chameleon he was until I saw him again in the Black Adder series as... Yeah, you see, I am a colossal pervert. <laughs> I was like... Who is that guy that wants the credits rolled? I'm like, that's Ronald Lacey. No. Not only the historical, I guess, significance, you could say, but whatever reasons that there are, whether it be visually aesthetic or all the reasons that it got put into the Library of Congress and AFI's Top 100, it's like, it has all the right elements to it. You know, all these action sequences, which were incredibly memorable, in big part thanks to John Williams' music, and so many elements that stuck with us throughout the years and sort of gave me ideas and inspiration. I was like, okay, this is how you structure, this is how you can sequence together action shots to make a whole exciting scene. And it stuck with me so well that uh, some friends and myself back in 2007 or 2008, we made a like a parody film on Raiders of the Lost Ark. And we couldn't show it to anybody but our friends, you know, just have one little movie gathering. And somebody said, well, why don't you put this out there? It was like, no, oh, we can't. This was before YouTube. It was like, no, oh, we can't put it out there because even though we're making visual parodies on most of the film, most of the jokes in the film, we're still using <laughs> the official movie soundtracks. So it's like, ah, oh, we just... Everything really gripped me and fascinated me. Well, almost everything. I, if I remember correctly, the, the few things that I may have tuned out as a kid because it wasn't, you know, exciting and action-y was most of the submarine sequence or the ship sequence leading up to that. And it was like, eh, romance, ew. And maybe a little bit of the dialogue while they were in Cairo, I think. So bits of towards the end of the film I remembered but you know the truck sequence you know Indy fighting the Nazis fighting the big Nazi right outside the airplane which 
It's cool that Pat Roach, the actor who played that big German, ended up also playing the big guy in the Temple of Doom on the conveyor belt. And I thought when I saw Last Crusade that he played Hitler because the, the facial structure, the facial features it, and the eyes, it looked very similar. I thought that was Pat Roach. Then once I looked it up on IMDb, I see, oh no, he played the Gestapo that was walking towards the airship. Uh, and I think that that scene got cut in the end, which, eh, okay, it is what it is. Again, you know, purpose of pacing. Can't forget, you know, all the all the jokes and one-liners and scenes that may have been accidental but worked out in the end. I couldn't tell as a kid that there was a piece of glass in between Harrison Ford and that Cobra. It was like, ooh, I'm so in the moment watching this. Like, ooh, it's kind of terrifying, but in a really fun way. The sequence where he's running around Cairo looking for Marion, and, you know, the big guy shows up twirling the sword, and he's like, eh, pfft. Didn't know. I just thought it was a gag as a kid. And then, of course, you learn down the road, you know, years later, that, oh, everybody got sick. And especially Harrison Ford got sick on that day. So we're like, well, we can't do this sequence the way we want to, and we only have so much time to shoot it. Like, eh, just let me take out the gun and boom, boom. Like, okay, that'll work. <laughs> it's one of the joys of filmmaking, you know. Hey, there's a simple solution sometimes. The only thing I didn't really like, and I, one, as a kid, I wasn't really interested in Marion because I was like, eh, I think, I just didn't think she was a, a great actress at the time, but then I hadn't seen Animal House, I hadn't seen other things that Karen Allen had been in. I loved her in The Sandlot, but I just, I didn't think she was that good. I was wrong because I found out that her and Paul Freeman sort of improvised the scene where she's changing out of one set of clothes and into the dress and thinking okay how do they justify her getting into the dress and you know the knife trying to get out of the tent later where she puts the clothes on top of the knife on the table then they have the drinking game like oh most of that was improvised that's really good improvisation like my hat is off to you karen allen for that but other than that i felt like well kind of I mean I get it you know hearkening back to the the old 1930 series you know the damsel in distress and all that it's like yeah I, I guess it, there's a I guess there's a reason they wrote her that way I just didn't find it as interesting but overall still a great film I think by all accounts now Temple of Doom I saw it like once maybe twice as a kid or one or two more times as I was a teenager or something like that. I didn't really have an interest in that one. Uh, and there are numerous reasons that anybody could, you know, if you want to leave a comment, go down and here's why I didn't like it either or something why I don't think it worked overall. That's fine. You know, we all have our different perspectives on the film. Granted, it was dark, much darker tone than the previous one. But I kind of knew then, as I know now, it's like, well, these are separate standalone Indiana Jones adventures, not one whole overarching thing. And Temple of Doom was set before Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I didn't get what people seem to have a problem with Short Round. I thought it was fine. Love the kid. We all wanted to be a sidekick to Indiana Jones. You know, dark things like the dinner. <laughs> and the bugs that part was kind of disgustingly cool but still kind of ugh. i don't think i really want to watch that because you know i started having nightmares about it even more so than the other monster movies i've talked about the heart <laughs> scene it's like i grew up thinking about that scene a lot it's like oh god what if i had a dream and that happened to me done in by big old Mularam who maybe I'm the only one who sees this, but kind of a cross between Boris Karloff and Abe Vigoda meeting together. In hell! The actors in that film did, a, did their job well. I didn't know for years that, oh, in the beginning, uh, the guy outside the plane in, Sh in Shanghai, that's Dan Aykroyd. 
I didn't know that for years. That's one of those things you look back, you're like, oh, I didn't get that the first time or the first couple of times I saw it. That's really cool. I think my biggest problem with the film then and maybe a little now, it's like Kate Capshaw. I guess she, you know, she played the part as she was supposed to, you know, doing her job well. But the character was just written so, oh, I got to whine and complain about everything. It's like, yeah, I, I get it now. She's used to being pampered, as others have said, and having her way and living the high life and all that. It's like, ah, but it got so annoying. That was the impression that I got. And the minecart chase sequence, it was fun. I kind of tuned it out as a kid. I tuned a lot of that part out, a lot of the palace, apart from the dinner scene. And... Uh, tuned out a bit of the opening in Shanghai because I couldn't really remember it the second time I saw the movie. But now I look at it, it was like, oh yeah, this is kind of a fun sequence. And, you know, Steven Spielberg got to direct a little dance number like the old Busby Berkeley numbers. Like, that's cool. I like that. So yeah, my view of Temple of Doom has changed, I think, a little more positively over the years or over the views. Now, do I enjoy it as much as Raiders or Last Crusade? No. <laughs> but it's not a bad film. It's just darker. <laughs> now, some of us could debate it till the cows come home, which is better, Raiders or Last Crusade? That's a tough one. I just, I love Last Crusade so much. I could watch that even more than Raiders of the Lost Ark. Every, everything about it, you know, Indy fighting the Nazis again and the lighter jokes and more gags and I could swear the first time I saw Last Crusade my parents took me to the movie theater to see it because the other two came out before I was born I could swear that I remember River Phoenix when he's running across the top of the train and getting into a fight with one of the guys and the rhinoceros you know sticks his horn up through the roof I could swear that in the original theatrical release that he said holy shit because that seriously looks like what he's mouthing on screen, but the dialogue, I'm assuming ADR, I guess they had to change it to Holy Smokes. Maybe I'm remembering it just because of how he's mouthing it, but it looks that way. Just like the snakes in Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I didn't know that so many of those fake snakes were like rubber hoses cut up. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, it works. It blends in so nicely. Just like in Last Crusade, you know, the fake rats sort of blend in with the real rats, and I, I love little ratties. They're so cute and sweet and very intelligent. I felt so bad for the little rats in the catacombs beneath Venice, and I thought, okay, they're not real. They're just little animatronics. Okay, it's, it's all right. There's also so many well-written, memorable lines. Junior! Hey, now. Don't call me Junior. That's right. Yeah, it was cool to have Denim Elliott as Marcus Brody on this adventure. He always struck me as, you know, someone you wanted to see more of in the movies. And I hadn't seen the other films he'd been in. Like, I think uh, Noise is Off at the time. I didn't see that till years later. But him and John Reese davies Sala's back. And Sean Connery, you know, brilliant as ever in that one. Just the way he delivers his lines. Not just because of the accent. I'm half Scottish, so I always... I'm biased for the Scottish accent. Yeah, those three trials at the end, I was like, that was kind of scary, again, in a fun way. Those types of sequences I would think about, you know, for years down the road. It's like, one, oh, how did they do that exactly? And I wanted to know the, the technical details and behind the scenes. Now I know they've got, you know, the making of the documentaries now, which are totally fun to watch. I kind of wish they'd have commentary tracks, but I get why Spielberg doesn't want to do those, and that's fine. I respect that. You know, keep keep the magic. I really liked how they wrote uh, Allison Duty's character. You know, given, yeah, she's a bad guy in the end, but she wasn't helpless. She wasn't whiny. She's like one of the Bond girls that could kick ass and take care of herself, even if she turned out to be one of the bad guys. And yeah, Julian Glover played a great bad guy, great Walter Donovan. Didn't really know who he was before that or after, although, yeah, I did see him in Empire Strikes Back, but that was about it. And of course, now he's 
remembered from Game of Thrones. <laughs> and unless I'm wrong, but I looked this up on IMDb in the the fan Wikipedia for Indiana Jones, seeing that Ronald Lacey is in Last Crusade as Heinrich Himmler, who's standing right next to Hitler at the big scene. So I watched that again and I was like, really? That's him? But yeah, and of course, the big finale, the big ending, the riding off into the sunset. Like, yes, that's the perfect ending, especially to this adventure series. So yeah, I mean, I love the first three movies, the trilogy. The fourth one, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I'm not gonna knock anyone who will justify it or say they liked it. That's totally fine with me. I'm just saying I don't. <laughs> There are too many things that weigh it down for me, or too many unbelievable moments. You know, swinging through the jungle with all the monkeys, the the ants building up. I saw it in the movie theater, and I even said out loud, I was like, oh, there is no way. And a friend of mine said, yeah, there are actually species of ants that can sort of do that. I was like, really? Well, not that fast. And plus, it, it was CG, and it looked bad to me. And the visual aesthetic, it seemed to be there was kind of a light bloom effect on everything. And that was kind of the trend at the time, I guess in the mid-2000s. You know, let's have a light bloom effect on everything. I personally always found that effect really annoying. I get it. You know, it appropriately took you know, historical elements of the time because it was set in the 50s, you know, the Russians and uh, the visuals of things being controlled by aliens or the aliens are going to come down and get people in, you know, the B movies or the TV shows of the 50s. And that's okay. That concept is fine with me. I just didn't really care for the visuals or how they went about things. It's like the movie really just fell off for me once they went back to South America. So I watched it once. I haven't really watched the Blu-ray since I got it. You know, it was part of the whole four movie collection. Because, you know, I wasn't a big fan of Shia LaBeouf. Like most of his lines were just making old man jokes at Indiana Jones's expense. And I was like, Okay, yes, we get it. We've gotten it many times before. He can't do the things he used to do. Can we please try to keep the script staying in the moment and focus on the now? And someone said, I think his character was really only around to justify Karen Allen's character coming back, which, you know, I didn't really care for it. I mean, not to say that it's a completely terrible movie. There were enjoyable moments and elements. I thought having Jim Broadbent in there giving a nod to Marcus Brody, that was nice. It was sweet. And the ending I didn't really care for because, you know, it, it was trendy to, oh, let's leave things open for you know, a possible sequel again for this person to take up the mantle, so to speak. But, yeah, no. It just didn't work for me. That's all. If it worked for you, that's cool. That's fine. It just didn't work for me. I... Plus, I didn't grow up with it. I didn't see it when I was a kid. I'm just enjoying the first three that I grew up with. But yeah, overall, it, the ultimate adventure, you know, professor of archaeology, and the references to the pop culture and things in, in the previous years of the 1930s and the black and white film days, I think that's cool. So maybe that's just me. You know, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what other people uh, found to be their favorite moments or memorable moments that they sort of grew up with. So, all right, that's enough fun for this week. So y'all be excellent and I'll see y'all in the next one.